Welcome to Back to the Frame Rate, part of the Western Media Podcast Network. Back to the Frame Rate, where we watch and discuss films on VOD and streaming platforms for your entertainment. I'm your host, Nathan Schur, and I'm here with Ellie Escobar and Brianna Butterworth. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we are here with a special bonus episode where we're going to be talking, discussing the new David Fincher film, The Killer, which just hit Netflix a couple of days ago. And we figured what a great opportunity for us to get together after our main discussion. We just recorded our episode on a body double. We decided to just stick around and do a quick little discussion of this new film that just hit the streaming platform. We all just watched this over the past week and this should be a fun, quick little discussion discussion of this film before uh we begin i you know i want to ask everybody you know where are we all coming in with david fincher because you know he has been one of our um i don't know if i'd call him prolific director i mean he's obviously been Mm -hmm. in the the zeitgeist for you know a good 30 plus years you know i I just want to talk about david fincher in general you know what are our overall thoughts about him as a director I'm a huge fan. Um, Yeah, (laughs) I'm a huge fan of David Fincher, but weirdly for a long time, I don't think I connected that the films that I loved were David Fincher films. I don't think I was. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think I was putting two and two together. Now, I came to loving movies later in my life. Um, So I wasn't in high school or even in early college, like thinking, oh, I have to see every movie that comes out by this director. That just wasn't really what I was up to. I was just watching anything that kind of struck my fancy Mm -hmm. and it just didn't occur to me. So the the movies that made him really big, Seven and Fight Club, those came out when I was really too young to have seen them. But I have a brother who is 10 years older than I am. So they got seen anyway and they were thoroughly enjoyed. But by the time I was in high school and Zodiac comes out and Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Social Network comes out, now I'm starting to see those on my own accord and I'm really loving them. But I don't think I put the, together that they were Fincher movies until Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And then I was like, oh, that's this guy. He's been doing all this stuff. And now I've sort of gone back and I've rewatched them in the context of knowing that they're all the same person and, and parsing that out. Yeah, I, I feel exactly the same as you do. I've been watching all of his films and I never it I never even realize that this it is didn't the clock same it. which seems crazy because they look the same like he has yeah. a really distinctive style and so I and I love all those films and I it wasn't so recently that I realized well, wait a minute because mm-hmm. uh, I'm like wait is that the same director that directed you know you know Fight Club and so I I think I have not seen the game. Um, You're not missing a lot. <laughs> girl with the tattoo. I haven't seen the girl with the oh, tattoo. Oh, girl with the dragon tattoo is oh, amazing. Yeah, really I good. haven't seen yeah. that one, but I've seen oh, that movie. Just about, I've seen every other film of David. Oh, really? Yeah, I've seen all of them. It's just mm-hmm. because I. That's the mission I'm on now. Yeah. 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 I, I can honestly say I've seen every single. David Fincher film in the theater, except for the most recent two, because well, Mank, I don't know if it had any. I don't think that had a theatrical release. release. I don't know. The Killer did very limited, and I tried to find a way of getting out to see it. I did not. I saw it on Netflix, mm. but I cannot. I saw Alien Three in the theater because I was a huge fan of Alien and, Al- and Aliens. Mm. I did not see those in the theater, but uh, when Alien Three came out, my anticipation was through the roof, and me and my dad went out to see that. Now I was a little disappointed in it at the time it has since really grown on me i love Mm. alien 3 and i didn't know who david fincher was i didn't when i eventually did see seven the game and fight club which i think were three movies that at the time in the in the 90s i think really is when he put a stamp on his signature style um i still didn't really associate that oh this is the guy that did alien 3 You know, I Mm -hmm. probably wasn't really much online at the time and made that connection. But now I realize, oh, this guy even had his vision 
back then for Alien 3. Yeah. And um, I think Alien 3 is a highly underrated film. If it wasn't for the fact that this is coming off the coattails of a masterpiece with Aliens, I think Alien 3 is an incredible film. I might be in the minority saying that, but it is uh, it is really good I don't film. think you are. I think people look back on Alien 3 with a lot of love for it. Yeah, I, I I hope so. I hope so. It is is kind of uh, well. It's it doesn't reach the standards of Ridley Scott's you know Alien or James Cameron Aliens. It is a completely mm. different film. But I'm glad that it's not trying to do the same thing as Alien or Aliens. It is a completely different kind of movie. It's a different genre. It's a prison mm. movie. You yeah. know, it really is what it is. So it's I'm gonna uh, watch it this I, week. Close out uh, the yeah. filmography. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, 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 I have a blast with it. So, but it's it's a dark film. It is not a fun film at all, but it's it. But I, I, I get a kick out of it. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying, I've seen uh, every, any movie that has had, I guess, a wide release. I have been there like opening weekend. So even that, you know, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, we, we talked about um, that. I think it, I think that's his only movie that's been uh, like a remake as well. Has anyone seen the the original mm-hmm. trilogy? Yeah, it sounds good. David Fincher really did a great job. They are good. And it's um, – I really wish that there was a – I don't know if he was ever considered to, to continue that series. I wish that storyline was continued with those characters, uh, with Daniel Craig and um, – oh, what's her name? Yeah. Rooney Mara. Mm-hmm. Rooney Mara. Because uh, I think that movie is one of his best. It's excellent. Yeah. yeah. It's such a um, – it really wraps you into the world. Like it, it's it's terrible and horrific, but it's kind of a cozy movie. Mm. <laughs> so, all right. Well, before we continue, I'm just going to read a quick plot synopsis of David Fincher's The Killer. Solitary, cold, methodical, and unencumbered by scruples or regrets, a killer waits in the shadows, watching for his next target. Yet, the longer he waits, the more he thinks he's losing his mind, if not his cool. Uh, the Killer is uh, stars Michael Fassbender. Mm-hmm. And uh, Michael Fassbender, interesting actor. I There was a while when Michael Fassbender was on top of of the world. I think from like 2010, maybe like 2015, he was everywhere. And I think that he is just kind of, he disappeared for a while and I don't know necessarily what happened to him, but it's, I think it's great to see him. First of all, headlining a movie. I think Michael mm-hmm. Fassbender and Fincher, I, I think are a great match. I think it's, uh, I, I hope that they continue their collaboration, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Let's, you know, kind of like, bounce around what our what our thoughts are on this because i think there's there's a lot to dive into on here i'll just, just kind of throw this out there i i had a i had a really good time in this movie i, I did too. yeah I, I i i really did i think that the the opening of this movie i think is is it's interesting because um I wasn't digging this in the beginning. I think this movie mm. takes some time to warm up to it. It's a, this is a cold clinical movie. Really clinical. It, it, it really it really is. But it it took me about halfway through this movie to like really vibe with this. Really? It, it did. It wasn't until oh. it wasn't until the second half of this when it's clear what uh, Michael Fassbender. He never has a name in this movie. What his mission is? That I was like, yes, the, I I know what this movie is about now, and mm. I really started to to, to vibe with this. Um, this is absolutely the Michael Fassbender show, and uh, I've and I uh, I really really started to dig this. And there's many many great scenes. Um, I don't know. What did you guys? think? It's so funny, Ellie. You were saying earlier too. It's so funny. It's such a it, there's. You know, in the sense that there's, you know, this sort of cloud because he's killing people and he's terminating people's mm-hmm. lives. Um, at the same time, it's just so funny to me. And unlike Nathan, uh, the movie grabbed me not so much with the visual, but with what was said in the movie. The, the When he's talking to himself, and, and I think I relate to him, into this character because I, I'm that type of person that wakes up in the morning and first thing I do is start talking to myself and I feel <laughs> like this character talks to himself like he because he's 
mm-hmm. waiting and waiting for to do the hit. And while he's waiting, he's talking to himself. Well, because, you know, I mean, one of, he's not one talking of the, himself, it's all inner monologue. He's not, yeah. Right. And, and, yeah. I, and I mean, I have an inner monologue that mm-hmm. is consistently like, I, Every day, that's mm-hmm. just me. I have yeah. this other character that I talk to every day, and we go on missions, and we. So I really love that, and you know, it, it's um, there's there's so many good phrases, lines, quotes from this movie that I just love and I connect with. And listening to the to this character monologue um, from the very beginning, I'm like, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I keep saying like <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and this one, this one, um, when he says it's amazing how he he says it's amazing how physically exhausting it can be to do nothing, and yeah. that couldn't be that could be so true. Like I could just get exhausted from just sitting and doing nothing, so I always have to be doing something. But there's so many great things about what he hey, did, says. Hey, did you have a favorite line from this movie? Couldn't tell you the whole Tilda Swinton stuff. Just what? half of what she said. Tilda Swinton. Oh, the scene with Tilda Swinton was incredible. Yeah, yeah. I can't pick a. I can't remember an exact line of dialogue that was my favorite, but Tilda's whole attitude towards it, I thought was very funny when she I orders the yeah, flight of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I I love the line where there should be a seven day waiting period on creatine. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny I, there's um one line that i it's funny because i i connect so much t- t- to the dialogue in this That's movie terrifying and insight, i just Kelly. love it i love yeah. it because okay you know i love serial killer movies right but this is like an assassin but the thing is like there's so much true to every line that's been said in this movie and like one of the things um is he's one of the nice stick to your plan. Uh, oh yeah, your, that re- that repetitive plan, motif that he does. Anticipate, his rules for himself. What is it? Stick to your plan. Anticipate. Don't don't improve. Don't improv. Don't improvise. Don't, don't improvise. improvise. Yeah. Don't improvise. Um, uh, I forget the rest, but it says, um, uh, "Oh, trust no one." Right. Mm-hmm. And there's mm-hmm. more to this, but I lo- I love this this first thing because it's like. It's something that I tell myself, like, you know. Oh, I you love that he has all these rules for himself that he can't follow. Like, he's the ultimate yeah. reliable this is, He's going, narrator. stick to your plan, anticipate, don't improvise. And I'm sitting there waiting, and he's ready to shoot. And I'm like, oh, my God. Okay, okay. He's so precise. He's so perfect about everything. The movie shows him as, like, very calm, cool, and collected. But I think in another director's hands, he kind of would have been a little bit more bumbling. But then he right? misses the shot. He misses the target right away. And I'm like, yeah. that cracked me At up. every opportunity. At every dude, opportunity. He's building, breaks this, one he, of his he's rules. building this up for us. He's like, I, I'm building it up. Okay, he's all along. He's getting ready. I'm Build up. I know he's gonna shoot that person, and he misses. I'm like, oh, every time. I, but do you on. think this is David Fincher sort of taking pot shots at these types of characters that he's written before? Like, do you think this is David Fincher mm. going? Should I have done Fight Club? How do I feel about having done Fight Club? Interesting. <laughs> mm. I don't know. <gasps> hmm. I don't- that, that, that's an interesting way of looking at this. I mean, like he, like you said, he's he lays out all these rules for himself, and he he can't follow his own advice <laughs> or this. And I think that makes him just a very uh, layered character. And um, I don't know. So I, I I also loved. Okay, I loved I love everything. I love the yoga moments in the movie. Okay, because I'm like mm-hmm. I'm a yoga guru. I love yoga. I just do my yoga every morning, and then I do. Um, I love the um, the fact that he <laughs> when he goes to buy a sandwich, but he he only eats the ham and the egg. He doesn't eat the bread. Oh, he's on like yes. keto. Yeah, yeah, he's on a yeah. keto diet. I'm like, oh, I need to do well, that. This, this is an example of what I really enjoyed about this film because it's so rare for you know. 
uh, for film to be t- showing us so much of this kind of character building, mm. um, where we see a character like this, you know, how he makes this mistake, but we're t- seeing how he, what he has to do to clean up this mess. It's so clinical and I love the attention to detail. Uh, mm. you know, I love, it shows how he dr- has to drink out of his own cup, how he has mm. to spray down everything to get the residue off of him. Everything's so, feels so tactile and, and, in how he has to disperse of the evidence all over the city. The first 50 minutes of this is really just him cleaning up a mess. And it's this inner monologue. I, I actually, like I said before, I was struggling with this a little bit because mm-hmm. I was really wondering, is this going to be the whole movie? Mm-hmm. But the second half of this movie saves retroactively saves the first half of this one because now I, I learned to appreciate why I spent this time with him seeing his process. I was like, aha. And now like, I like the fact that I got to see how he has to live his life and get into his head. It pays off because now I, I, I learned about who he is and the mis- why, he, why he is the way he is and, and the mistakes that he made, you know, and the, and the consequences of that. It, it all builds to something and uh, I really learned to appreciate that. And when the second half, like 15 minutes into this movie, this movie – goes bonkers it does Mm -hmm. he he starts taking out you know these people and it's amazing there's a scene where he um, breaks into i think charles parnell's office what i love and i don't want to please stop me if i'm hijacking anything here this movie i think kicks into gear here because one of the things i love about this film is in any other assassin movie if somebody was trying to get in break into uh, an office or any place, he would just like whip out the tool. I got the thing right here, the key card, and get mm-hmm. in. He goes into a place and says, okay, this is what I need to do to get in here. And then he figures it out, leaves, hops on Amazon, buys the thing, comes back the next right. day. It shows his process for figuring this out. We are in his head learning these things in real time as he's learning these things. No other movie I've seen do anything like this. Him going this to rent is- the car. This is this is like the Fincher process. This is something that I it reminds me. There's definitely a companion piece would be some maybe like Fight Club, where there's so much, I feel like what Edward Norton was doing, maybe with that monologue in there. But I'm trying to compare this to something else in his filmography. Um, but I, really, I think it's kind of you can you can kind of get zodiacy with how precise yeah. everything is. But um, I think this is Fincher's most meta work mm-hmm. in that way. I think it's it's one of his only. I I think. Char- real character driven movies I think the plot really takes a back seat in this I kind of think Fincher yeah. cares less about it I think in the context of where Fincher is in his career this is super interesting where he reflects on these sort of male anti-heroes and turns them into this failure this person who bumbles around this person who who doesn't who isn't who he's built himself up to be in his mind. And I think uh, that's really interesting. And it's also interesting in the context, uh, it came out right after Mank and, you know, Mank was the, you know, what I think a lot of people felt was the botched job. I don't feel that way, but I think a lot of people were like, oh, this is a step back for Fincher. And then it's his clinical pride. He returns to form and he's going to really show it in your face. Um, the cinematographer so had something interesting on the, I think radio times.com. The cinematographer was Eric uh, Messerschmidt. And he was mm-hmm. talking about this and he was speaking for Fincher and he, they were asking about, clarifying what you're talking about. Um, And he said, you know, don't look for a theme in this movie. The film is about process, about Mm. process and procedure. He's talking about this right here. So I thought that was uh, uh, speaking right about this right here. The the precise, it's precise when the character is precise and it's messy when he's distraught. And that Mm. is what really intrigued me. So I that's love that. a that's, this is where I connect to this character so much because 
if you're any, so I, I have a process to everything that I do and it has to be organized in a certain way or otherwise it doesn't work for me. So like every morning I have to tell myself this and I have to do this and I have to do that because I have a job that requires me to do, um, to be very focused and uh, attention to detail, um, to avoid mistakes. Yeah. And so, um, so I consistently, I'm always like talking to myself and, and okay, this is what we're going to do. But I also felt the connection when it comes to the messy part of it, because I'm such a klutz. <laughs> like I could be like, I have everything ready. Everything's set. The mission is going to be accomplished. And then something drops. You know, I'm like, what the heck? Seriously? That's just life. And I'm like, and then I go, seriously, Ellie? Like, come on. So she starts to talk to herself. And so... I love this character because in a way, um, obviously I'm not an assassin, but it's a job that he's performing. How do we know you're not? Well, yeah, really. And then, and then, All no one's ever going to know, well. you know the real job that I do. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but to me, it's like, it's like such a, you know, it's like you say, it's, she, he's, it's the process of what he has to go through yes. to yeah. do the job right. And yet, we see a human side that is like uh, as much mm-hmm. as he prepares, as much as organized as he is, as much as he gets it down to the T, he's going to mess up Yeah, because that's what I, you know, that's, I don't know how many yeah. humans do that, but I know that's what happened to me. You and know, it, it's like, it, yeah, and a great example is, you know, his, his botched attempt to, when he goes, to, especially to that Florida swamp home where he's trying to mm-hmm. uh, take out, uh, one of these guys that he's twice as big Some as him. Really fun oh, camera work one of, there. One of the great scene. One of the, one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen put on mm-hmm. on film. I mean, this is up there with John Wick style choreography. It's not seen, but back one. I, I reviewed this movie. I put a little thing on on Letterbox. This is the anti John Wick because John Wick can do anything, and and this is like the anti of that and. But I, I'm telling you, it's the protein and the yoga. That's yeah. That's it. <laughs> but, uh, but what I'm saying is this, the fight choreography and this is wonderful. He, he is, they're using anything and everything in this house as a weapon. And it is one of the most gorgeous and greatest fight scenes I have seen uh, in a film in ages. It is a mm-hmm. highlight for this movie. I don't know. You guys have any thoughts on, on this scene? Yeah, I thought it was great. I thought the camera work was really fun. It kept me super engaged. These are the kind of scenes that I can tend to, my mind can tend to drift a little bit when things get super action-y. Um, it's just not my favorite, but that I was engaged the whole time. I was really into it. I thought they were funny. I thought they were smart. Um, yeah. Ellie, what about you? No, I loved that. I, 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 mean, I don't think there's anything in this movie that I didn't like. I loved everything from the very get-go yeah. to the very end. And just, uh, just, I think I just fell in love with this character. You know? Now, how about the ending? And, and what I will, I will put a little spoiler warning right now because I do want to just say a couple things about the end. If you have not seen this movie because it is brand new, maybe you could end the the the, your, the podcast now. But I want to mention right now a few things about the end because he visits – there's a final confrontation with the client named Claiborne, played by Arliss mm-hmm. Howard. And I want to throw out there, why does the Fassbender character – not take his own advice in this scene and let him live. What are your thoughts on this? I, I have my own opinions on this, but I'd like to kind of throw that out there. What scene was what, that? I'm sorry. The very end, he lets Claiborne live. He has every opportunity to kill the, the final guy. And he says, and he, and he walks away, letting him live. Think, yeah, I I thought it was great as to like, are you asking what his motivation was for that? Yeah, I mean, I love it, but I'm just curious what it's, it's just kind of like out there dangling. And I've read a lot of bad, some of the negative reviews that I've read. I know Ellie, you don't read reviews, but I like to read other, what other people think about this movie and so much backlash comes back to this movie hanging on how much people 
dislike this ending. I thought it was so great. I I really thought it was Fassbender. Like he's been put through the ringer. You're introduced to him as a character who has not yet failed. Now he has this mission that's incredibly personal to him and he keeps messing up and it's gotten really messy and he's gotten super overwhelmed. And then he gets to this point and I don't know, Fassbender to me kind of played it as just a little bit exhausted. He was like, all right, this guy really does seem like too dumb to kill. Like <laughs> that, that was sort of like my that. takeaway. Um, you know, I think Fastbender was just like, I just want to go back with my woman while she recovers and and enter into retirement because I'm so done with how futile all this is. Because that's what the guy was saying, right? He's like, I don't even know. I just called someone. I just pushed a button. But, like but at that whatever. Point, I mean, he he had no problem killing like a cab driver that was completely innocent in this, right? Yeah, but I think he just got, I don't know. I mean, I don't think like a serial killer. I just thought he kind of, he <laughs> kind of got to do. the point where. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I just, I feel that I, honestly, I feel by the end of the film, my, my thinking is that um, I just feel like he didn't feel like he had a problem with Claiborne anymore after everything. He just wanted to like. I think he just realized how distanced, like the person who, who made the call, was from all the action that did all the damage, and he was just like, "This is insane," you know, just like, "All right, Um, yeah." What a choice, though, from Fincher. What a choice! It's it's so Buck's convention because I feel like nine out of. 10 other movies would have like put a bullet in that last guy walked off t- into the sunset. That's what I think most of us I don't were think expecting. Fincher does that a lot. I think Fincher likes to leave us on a little bit of a, mm-hmm. something else could happen here. You well, never know. But I feel like that's a Fincher thing. I mean, like he doesn't yeah. give us what maybe you would expect. Like girl with a dragon tattoo, they meet again, right? Then you have Gone Girl. They get back Fight at the club end. Does a similar thing. Fight so club. Many, yeah, exactly. Um, no. I my th- I, I've been wrestling with this over the last couple of days, and the only thing I can really come up with is he lets him live, possibly because. It's a debt that he can collect later on. This is a very powerful man, mm-hmm. maybe. And what is the advantage? Is there advantage to sparing his life? Is is this mercy? I don't I don't think it's mercy necessarily. It has to be a calculated move, is all I can think. But it's not obvious. It's not outwardly saying that. Like I said before, he didn't hesitate at all to murder anyone that got in his way before. You know, by sparing Claiborne is perhaps somehow insurance. But it doesn't say this out, outwardly. But his murder may prompt an investigation. But you know, of a super powerful billionaire. So I don't know, but uh, you know, harkens back to his rules. You know, ask your, and he says it. Ask yourself, what's in it for me? And maybe he just thought that he is more valuable alive as, as an asset for future use. You know, that's all I can really speculate on. Is it, when I when I think about that. So I don't know. It's it's interesting, but I I like the fact that Fincher kind of, you know. Well, didn't 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 he tell? Doesn't he tell him Claiborne at one point that he has no issues with him? He well, that's what Claiborne tells Fastbender, I mean, right? Yeah, that I have no beef with you. Like I, yeah. he's very convincing. You know, I, yeah. I I get it. You know, but uh, it just seems like somebody who's just uh, B. I can't hear you. I think he kind of broke his own rule, yeah. though, right? Because he well, says, "Stick completely. to your plan, anticipate, don't improvise, yeah. uh, trust no one." Yeah, well, he did that all the time. Yeah, yeah, he, he's horrible at following his own rules. Yeah, but he does say, "Fight, <laughs> fight only the battle that you're paid to fight." Yeah. So maybe he just want to show him that I can get to you mm. whenever I want. You know, and this is my insurance. Don't don't screw with me. You yeah. know, I, that's we wanted to show that I you're not safe. You know, I can get to you, and he he could see 
in in Claiborne that he he was scared. He knows so that maybe we're gonna have. I don't know though. He didn't do anything for. Oh, sorry, Ellie. I, he didn't do anything for like demonstration sake though. Throughout yeah. the whole film, he did just like he wanted. He failed. He wanted to do like clean, quick kills. Or maybe yeah. he thought he was so perfect that he could do it, but then, yeah. you know. But I'm thinking maybe there's gonna be maybe maybe you know. It was left that way so that there's a part two to it. We'll see. So anyways, um, I think it was a good little uh, discussion on the killer. Oh, by the way, I do have to say before we go, <laughs> top tier score from Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross. Love yes. It. I think this is the best since Social Network, maybe even better than Social Network. I loved it. Oh. Incredible. We I think we have to mention that the the Smiths, not a big Smiths fan, but the the needle drop for how soon is now is how soon is now is perfect. So, when this some of the reviews up. for this called it the called the killer the least toxic Smiths fan, which has been cracking <laughs> me up for a week. Um but I think I mean Girl with the Dragon Tattoo might still be my contender for I don't know. Best Trent and Atticus score. I know. I this this is up there. I, you know, I haven't seen Girl with a Dragon Tattoo since I'm just doing my rewatch. Yeah, it makes me want. To, I I I I do need to revisit some Fincher. I, I you know before we go, I want to do one quick thing. I want to hear everyone's that top five Fincher. Oh yeah, Ellie, yeah. go for it. I, 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 on a whim, right now. Seven. Mm-hmm. I okay. <laughs> I feel about serial killers. So, you know, Zodiac. Um, yeah. mm, 5 Club. I really love Fight Club. Uh, what am, how many is that? Oh, Two? The Strange Life of Benjamin Button. Oh, really? Oh, my Interesting. goodness. I love that movie. That like, does feel Ellie core. Forever. Yeah. I love that movie forever and ever and ever and ever <laughs> and ever and ever. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, the Gone Girl. Gone Girl, right? Mm. Mm. Gone Girl. Uh, is that five? Is that four? I'm not writing these down. Uh, wait, uh, <laughs> wait, uh, okay. I, I, I panic room because I freaking love Jodie Foster. Okay. So as you go. should. Yes. Yeah. And that's it. Those are my favorite five. Thank you for me. All right. Uh, in no particular order, I have Zodiac girl with a dragon tattoo gone girl. Um, Zodiac Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, Gone Girl, Social Network. And I'm torn between uh, Fight Club and Seven. I think I'm going to go Fight Club. Okay. And uh, I think I th- I kind of did a quick list. I'm going to go from five to one. I think I go I- – I have Panic Room at five. Just haven't seen that yet. Yeah. Zodiac at four. No. Gone Girl at yes. five. Gone Girl at five. Panic Room at four. Zodiac at three. Fight Club at two. Seven at one. There we go. There, there's the list. Oh, wow. Interesting. I, 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 I had Zodiac's to... that low for you. Oh, I think Zodiac's a perfect movie. Yeah. Zodiac, I have Zodiac at three. That's. I didn't weird. know we were supposed to rank them from like <laughs> bad to. No, I did. I did no order. I I, I, I okay. just kind of did. It. Where so where do you put? Do you think uh, the killer on on the whole oeuvre of David Fincher? Top tier, yeah. middle tier, lower tier. Uh, top tier think, for me. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of top tier movies. I think he could kind of rotate out for that number five slot I have. Like I could easily supplement Fight Club for some other Fincher movies and be fine with it. Watch yeah. The Killer, watch Seven. Yeah, mm. Gone Girl is the one I will supplement for a Killer. Mm. That too. I realize there's so many I have not revisited in a long time the 90s movies i've seen over and over again but i think his his everything after like mid 2000 yeah, everything from after zodiac like i have never revisited benjamin button i have not revisited social network i have not revisited dragon tattoo i haven't revisited gone girl all those movies i've seen one time in the theater and i haven't gone back to them and i really should That's, see them again I've so, seen- yeah. Benjamin I've been, a lot, and I've seen I freaking love Benjamin, and I 
Fight Club. I've seen it a few times. Yeah. Um, so rock and roll. Thank you, everyone. And uh, yeah, until uh, next time. And I'll, I'll probably do my little. Uh, so that concludes our like subscribe. Bonus show. Yeah, that concludes <laughs> our bonus show for this week. We appreciate you listening uh, to our bonus episode. As a final reminder, if you're enjoying what you hear, please consider leaving a rating and review. Your support truly brightens our day. You can uh, leave these uh, ratings and reviews on platforms like Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen or engage with our content. To stay updated, don't forget to subscribe to our monthly newsletter, Frame Rate Monthly, by sending an email to backtotheframerate at gmail.com. Back to the Frame Rate is a proud member of the Western Media Podcast Network. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Twitter. Where else? I don't know. <laughs> all, all those all those places. YouTube as well. You can find us, all these places, at Back to the frame rate. And of course, the most effective way to support us is by sharing our episodes and content on your social media platforms. Your support means the world to us. That's it. Oh, oh, and remember, 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 stick to your plan, anticipate, don't improvise, and trust no one. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. I want you to know it's over. Well. Bye.